everybody we are back with another dog sticker drawing thing <laughs> i already have two videos of me drawing various dogs for my dog stickers but as some of you know i am challenging myself to draw all approximately 200 akc accepted dog breeds that means that they are the dogs that are accepted in the american kennel club and i am trying to stick as closely as i can to each dog's accepted standard and accepted colors and coat patterns all while kind of making them cartoony and fun and vintage and cute so this time we are doing chihuahuas great pyrenees newfoundlands and then also I'm redoing Pomeranians because when I started this, I did Pomeranians first because I have three Pomeranians and I am not biased at all. <laughs> Since they were the first ones that I did, I feel like as I've been working through all of these, I've kind of developed and gotten more confident in the style that I'm working in for these stickers specifically. And when I look back on the Pomeranians now, I feel like they just don't really match the rest of them anymore because they're just very cartoony. So I have redone them. But we are starting with the Chihuahuas. Like a lot of different dog breeds, Chihuahuas come in a ton of colors that I could not fit all on one sheet because I can really only go up to 12 without it being really cramped and tiny and weird. So I try to stick with around 12. These are 12 of the popular colors amongst Chihuahuas, but they come in a butt ton of colors. They come in black, black and tan, black and white, black party color. They come in blue and blue tan and blue white and blue fawn, blue fawn and white, blue fawn sable, blue sable, blue sable and white, brindle, chocolate, chocolate and gold, chocolate and tan, chocolate tan and white, cream, cream and white, Cream sable, dark sable, fawn, fawn and white, fawn sable, gold, gold and white, gold sable, red, red and white, sa red sable, red sable and white, sable, sable and white, tricolor, white, white and chocolate, and wolf sable. <laughs> they come in both a smooth coat and a long coat, which you can see that I've alternated in my stickers here. I personally am partial to a long coat, but also that's probably because I love Pomeranians and I feel like when they have a longer coat, they look a little more like Poms. So I'm just kind of biased about that one. Some fun facts about Chihuahuas and also some good information in case you would like to get one in the future. I always suggest supporting ethical breeders or adopting, but if you are going about purchasing one from an ethical breeder, here are some things to look for. Make sure the dogs don't exceed six pounds. Anything over is technically off standard. They only really have one type of skull shape. I know that there's like a deer head and an apple head and everything, but they should just have a well-rounded apple dome skull. Any other terms for head shape are backyard breeder terms and that's a red flag. <laughs> so avoid any breeders that say that they have deer head chihuahuas or anything like that, or teacup chihuahuas. A chihuahua is up to six pounds, that's standard. So anyone saying a teacup chihuahua has no idea what they're talking about. Chihuahuas are a national symbol of Mexico, and also they are one of the oldest breeds of the Americas, with a lineage that goes back to the ancient kingdoms of pre-Columbian times. So they have been around for a long, long time. <laughs> Another note, I feel like Chihuahuas get a bad rap for having really poor temperaments, meaning that they can be aggressive or neurotic or just kind of fearful, like all of these really bad traits. All of these traits are really from either poor socialization, no training, or also really bad breeding. The temperament of a chihuahua should never be aggressive or neurotic. They should have terrier-like attitudes of self-importance, confidence, and self-reliance. They should be kind of big dogs and little bodies, but they should never be aggressive or mean in any way, shape, or form. The AKC describes them as charming, graceful, and sassy. 
I think a really well-bred Chihuahua is a great addition to a home because they're perfect little city dogs that can kind of go anywhere with you. They're confident and they're just ready and willing to please. Next, we are moving on to the Great Pyrenees and the Newfoundland. Ignore that it says the Pekingese on the top. I copy the template from previous ones and then I just changed the name. <laughs> so this is just from previous. So here we have the Great Pyrenees that I'm starting with. Unlike the Chihuahuas, the Great Pyrenees only really comes in like one color, which is white, but they can also be marked, meaning that they can have markings on their head or ears or parts of their body, but it can't exceed 30% of their coloring. So in my chart, I decided to show the white one and then some options or variations of marked ones so that you can kind of see how a marked Great Pyrenees might look. So I felt like that might be something that would be good to show because you don't want anything to exceed that. If you exceed that or have Great Pyrenees that come in just completely different colors, they are either definitely mixed with something or just not well bred. They are part of the working group in the AKC and they're usually used for farm life. So you might see them as like a guardian breed and they kind of live on the farm, maybe live outside or live amongst farm life or homestead life. The Newfoundland is also part of the working group and they come in a few more colors than the Great Pyrenees, but not as many as the Chihuahua. They only really come in four variations, black, brown, gray, and white and black, or also called Lancier. An interesting thing I learned about them that I did not know, they originated from Canada and they are born swimmers and they have partially webbed feet. So they were bred to basically rescue sailors who might have fallen off of a ship. And they would leap after and they are strong enough to save a grown man from drowning, which is actually really cool. They are an exceptionally loyal family dog and even though they're huge and they look powerful and heavy bone and intimidating, they're actually really mellow and they're a very patient and watchful breed that is usually very good with kids. I have a soft spot for these dogs because my aunt had these when I was growing up and at one point she had three of them. <laughs> All I remember about these dogs were they would just sit in the front yard and just chill and while i don't like that kids climb all over dogs i do remember kids climbing all over those dogs and they did not care i don't recommend letting your child do it but just a fun little analogy <laughs> finally we are just moving on to the pomeranian this one's kind of i'm just throwing in there because i decided very last minute to redo these like i said earlier in the video and i just wanted to make them a little more correct to how they are usually presented for showing. <laughs> you can see here in the background, I'll also put up a picture of the old design. And while I still think the old design is cute, it's just like, it's a little too exaggerated compared to the direction I went with other dog breeds. So I just really felt like at this point, since they were my first one, that they needed a redo. And since Pomeranians are kind of like my breed, I could bore you with so many insane details about the breed and their history and everything because I know absolutely way too much, but I will say a few things about them. There also is no such thing as a teacup Pomeranian. Their standard is three to seven pounds. That is the appropriate size for a Pomeranian. Anything smaller, I don't know why you would want a one pound Pomeranian. That sounds insane. Um, and then also anything bigger considered a throwback Pomeranian, that's also kind of like a backyard breeder term. And while they do exist, they're just, there's a myth that goes around that the bigger the Pomeranian is, the more healthy they are, which is not true. And that's not how genetics work. It really comes down to just their genes and if they are carrying genetically any health issues or not, regardless of size. They were bred to be companion dogs and alert dogs, meaning that they like to sit on your lap and bark at things to tell you that things are happening around you. <laughs> it's the best way I can phrase it. <laughs> they alert you to things. They don't particularly protect you from them, but they'll tell you that something's coming. 
I will say that I have found it helpful sometimes, but also other times it's annoying. <laughs> As I have three of them, and so they like to alert me about many things at home, like leaves, and squirrels, and wind. Other than that, they're very friendly and outgoing little dogs with like a big personality. They love people, they love to be the center of attention, and they are pretty big cuddle bugs. So if you like that in a dog, you might really like a Pomeranian. They're also pretty versatile dogs. They can do a lot of different types of dog sports, including agility, or fast cat, rally, obedience, stuff like that. So they don't just have to sit on a couch all day. They also like to get up and do stuff, but then also if you just want to lounge around, they can do that as well. Now, like the Chihuahua, the Pomeranian comes in a lot of different colors. They can come in orange, cream, orange sable, black and tan, black, white, wolf sable, party, chocolate, cream sable, blue merle, red, chocolate and tan, red sable, tricolor, blue, Blue Sable, Blue and Tan, Chocolate Merle, Beaver, Brindle, Lavender, Blue Brindle, etc. I will say Merle is kind of a contested color in Pomeranians. Merle is accepted in the AKC, but it is not accepted in other kennel clubs such as the FCI or the Canadian Kennel Club. So it is kind of one of those things amongst Pomeranian breeders on with if they like to see Merle included in these things or not. I'm including it only because it, it is accepted in the AKC and that's kind of what I'm going by. So that's why it's on the chart. So enjoy this last little part of this video and then we will move on to the reveal. With that out of the way, let's see the final images.
that's about it for this video. I hope you liked everything and tell me which one of these three was your favorite. And also let me know what dog breeds you want me to do next in the comments below. Leave a like if you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.